control. Hello and welcome back to Mzansu. We're back again. It's a time of the night where we have to talk about the case. And obviously there's nothing much to say. But uh, what we will talk about is whether um, what Nshololo did is actually something that was uh, called for or uncalled for. It's something to discuss, considering how um, Baloi uh, moves. Emily, greet our people. Hi guys, welcome back to the Mzansi Reality YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us yet again for another video. Um, we are going to be talking about the court proceedings today. Um, a lot of us happening in terms of seeing how the judge was really emphasizing and driving this point of them having not organized that expect in time. Mm. Um, I, I, I would say, one would say it was his opportunity to shine because for a very long time, uh, he's been wanting to blame the defense for delaying the case. And today got a perfect opportunity. And uh, yeah, it, it was a time of, of really making sure that he boasts about it, you know, and, and, and he puts it in our faces that, see, I gave them eight months. Yeah, definitely. And uh, he got it. They eventually delivered it to him. Yeah, they do. They, they, they did. They gave him that. He's been, he's been on their case. And today he just got the perfect opportunity. And he made sure, he made sure that, uh, you know, it's, it's loud, it's clear, it's seen. Mm. But Nabo, two weeks ago, I would have expected them that if they saw that the funds were not coming or not filling in the bill, they would have at least done it a little bit sooner. But Haretz, maybe they tried by all means not to involve legal aid in this. Perhaps legal aid was the final, final, final draw or straw, you know. So in the morning, the and head of the much legal are these aid people? board... Are we talking millions here? It's thousands. The bill is estimated around 50K or more. How often do you find yourself being consulted for, to do a ballistic test? But the, I think my, my issue with uh, this whole thing is 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 the emphasis by Nisi now that they are going to collaborate and all that. Let discrepancies be seen. Why, why do you want them to collaborate and try to unite and speak in one voice? Mm. What's the point? I mean, it kills the purpose. So we might as well just listen to uh, this guy telling us how it rolled how we printed everything. Well, guys, welcome back to the channel, Mzansi Reality. Okay? If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. So, in the morning, the head of the legal aid board, whom Judge Ratam Kwatling summoned to court, was not available, resulting in the court uh, citing Section 34A of the Criminal Procedure Act, which speaks to unreasonable delay. Baloy read the section titled Unreasonable Delay in Trials, Section 342A of 1. A court before which criminal proceedings are pending shall investigate any delay in the completion of proceedings which appears to the court to be unreasonable and which could cause substantial prejudice to the prosecution, the accused, or his or her legal advisor, the state 
or a witness in considering the question whether any delay is unreasonable, the court shall consider the following factors, the duration of the delay, the reasons advanced for the delay, whether any person can be blamed for the delay, the effect of the delay on the personal circumstances of the accused and the witnesses, the seriousness, extent or complexity of the charge or charges, actual or potential prejudice caused to the state or the defense by the delay including a weakening of the quality of evidence so the possible death or disappearance or non-availability of witnesses the loss of evidence problems regarding uh, the gathering of evidence and consideration of costs the effect of the delay on the administration of justice the adverse effect on the interest of the public or the victims in the event of the prosecution being stopped or discontinued any other factor which in the opinion of the court ought to be taken into account if the court finds that the completion of the proceedings is being delayed unreasonably, the court may issue any such order as it deems fit in order to eliminate the delay and any prejudice arising from it or to prevent further delay and prejudice including A, refusing further postponement of the proceedings, B, granting a postponement subject to any such conditions, uh, subject to um, any such conditions as the court may determine, C, whether the accused has not yet pleaded to the charge that the case be stuck off the, struck off the roll and the prosecution not be resumed or instituted de novo without written instruction of the attorney general or the director of public prosecutions. D, the accused has pleaded to the charge and the state or the defense, as the case may be, is unable to proceed with the case or refuses to do so that the proceedings be continued and disposed of as if the case for the prosecution or the defense, as the case may or has been closed. E, that the state shall pay the accused concerned the wasted costs incurred by the accused as a result of an unreasonable delay caused by an officer employed by the state. Uh, two, the accused or his or her legal advisor, as the case may or shall pay the state the wasted cost incurred by the state as a result of an unreasonable delay caused by the accused or his or her legal advisor. F, the matter be referred to the appropriate authority for administrative investigation and possibility of uh, disciplinary action against any person responsible for the delay. And then 4A, the order contempl contemplated in the subsection 3A where the accused has pleaded to the charge and an order contemplated in subsection 3D shall not be issued unless exceptional circumstances exist and all the other attempts to speed up the process have failed and the defense or the state, as the case may be, has given notice beforehand that it intends to apply for such an order. B, the Attorney General or the Director of Public Prosecutions and the accused may appeal against an order contemplated in subsection 3D and the provisions of section 310A and 316 in respect of an application or appeal referred to that section by an accused shall apply mutatis mutandis with reference to a case in which the Director of Public Prosecutions appeals and in the case of an appeal by the accused, the provisions of section 309 and 316 shall apply mutatis mutandis. So, five, where the court has made an order contemplated in subsection 3EA, the court shall be taxed according to the scale and the court deems fit. B, the order shall have the effect of a civil judgment of that court. Six, if the notice of the motion appears to the superior court that the institution or continuous of criminal proceedings is being delayed unreasonably in a lower court, Baloy said that he doesn't think it is applicable there, and then he stopped reading it there. And the judge said that it is fine. Uh, the main sections with the exigency dictates that he must address 
um, are in terms of the Constitution. The accused persons are entitled to a speedy trial. And this section speaks about unreasonable delays. And this can apply to the defense, the state, and even the witnesses. But we all know he's talking about the defense. Come on. <laughs> now, here we have an expert ballistic expert who gives forensic evidence in August. And then it takes eight months to cross-examine him. But the judge says he doesn't even know if that cross-examination is going to happen this year. No. So the judge in me at this point, it felt like he was making it seem like a man. I found out today that he's not actually Mangena. He's Mangena. Mangena. It, it took him eight months on the stand testifying. I mean, that's how he was putting it, as if he never took a break for eight months. You know, yes, he's been left hanging to some sort of an extent, but how, how the judge was making it sound here, it was like he's been on the stand for eight months without a break. And he said that it's unfair on the witness because he is seized with other matters. But the unfairness is predicated on the fact that in the pursuit of other evidence in this trial, the cross-examination also impunges upon the evidence of this witness who has given evidence in August and is not being cross-examined on that. That peculates on the unfairness of process because you can't say, for instance, that ballistic evidence, uh, we made an example uh, by mentioning Gomezulu, put it to Man Mangani, uh, this and that uh, Mangani uh, said this, that the answer is taken up by Ramosipili, for instance, and that is a con contradiction. And you can see that you don't have to be a lawyer. Eight months, no cross-examination. Then in the meantime, we are proceeding with other evidence. So this impunges on the freedom of the constitutional right of a client like the accused here to have a speedy trial. And if there is a bottleneck that is a pre-debated either by the defense itself or the legal aid board in not assisting in the payment of the costs of the ballistic report, which uh, the defense say it's important for their proper defense of the accused, then this court is obliged to investigate. It does not have to be a formal investigation, he said. So the judge said that uh, the request by legal aid to discuss the issue in chambers is also unlawful, okay? Uh, I, I, I didn't know that, but they are not supposed to have that discussion in in. In chambers, uh, I don't know. Here, I'm gonna need uh, them them lawyers uh, to assist. Um, so this conversation could not have happened in the chambers. It needed to happen inside the court. Mm. It needed to go on record. Mm. Mm. What do you think is doing? He was probing. He was probing and probing on behalf of the defense. Not on behalf of the defense. He was probing. For me, personally, I knew and I could sense from the beginning that he's trying to put the blame on the defense. He was going there, and he knew somehow, somewhere, they were wrong. And by calling the legal aid person to come and put that on record to say that, yes, they applied two weeks ago when, uh, you understand what I'm saying? Mm. It felt like he knows what he's doing. He's putting it on record mm. with reason. Yeah. No, I hear you. <coughs> I'm going to, to look at this in, in two ways. Um, um, the first one being, in my own opinion, mm -hmm. There is there seem to be this part of conceding that this case is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And looking into that, and if you if you were to consider that, then there is also a cost now to this case because if these people are released, for example, um, they are not charged. If this case is finally dismissed. 
then these people are going to sue the state mm-hmm. for the for all the damages yes that uh, this case has caused them yes so now it seems as if he was driving now that narrative to say that it is not the state that has wasted the, these people's time as they are sitting there in jail it is the defense also that has contributed to that so it's 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 not entirely with the states that's what i saw is 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 making it seem like this is uh, so when when or they might not need to even take it up because they wasted time because in all fairness if you look at this case this case is done mm. they they are trying to resuscitate it it's dead now the question that remains for this case to be dragged to this point is then what do we do? We might have successfully killed uh, 375, but then these people, if they walk free, then we have a problem. And the problem is that these people are going to sue us. And some of them, they were even working. So now we're going to have to even look at paying them. There's going to be interest in post there, which... Definitely, if they walk free, they will win. The, they will win this case, mm. the case of, of suing the states. So the, the, this this to me sounded like I'm putting it on record that you guys wasted your own time. Mm. And then number two. Now this is the part where you you also look at putting pressure. Uh, the, 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 there's this need for agents we are we are going towards the vo- voting times seemingly anything can happen this case might have been predicted to have been uh, ending towards maybe um, uh, before even the elections and it would have been a good news for everyone mm. but now this case has dragged to this point and there's no controlling that whether you like it or not, there's no controlling that. Do you understand? So there's this need of a speed. We, we are in a hurry now. But unfortunately, because of how this case was structured, it is impossible to have uh, uh, that agent that su- such that this case can be closed before we even start voting. Remember... Some might insinuate that this case uh, has a bit of political element in it. Um, some might, if I was talking to one person, just a general person, uh, they were talking about this case. They, they literally insinuated that uh, this case uh, to them looks like a political tool. So, and, 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 and there might be a bit of truth in that, in, in my own opinion. Now this political tool, how do you how do you how do you cut it off at the right time? And because the only time this case can be paraded as success is if it's finished mm. before voting. Now, it's if it's not finished there. before voting, then it has not done what what it was intended to do. Mm. Do do you understand? So there's this agents. And also, that agent comes with the defense being put under pressure and making mistakes. It is also demonstrated further when this witness that came after that um, is, 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 is shoved, in my own opinion, to these people's uh, 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 face. They are saying, you, you need to understand. I cannot say that I did not understand what the judge was uh, was explaining and everyone else was explaining. There's a bit of, uh, I would say, you could ac- accept that. But we, we, we have learned to know that if they say there's a bit of additional stuff, it's not a bit. They're talking about a total different story most of the time. So So we'll talk about it, but... Th- th- that's what I saw about this. There's, 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 they want them to hurry and also a bit of guilt tripping so that the next witness 
could come as a witness that is saving the defense from their laziness. So they should accept that defense, come hell or high water, that, that witness, come hell or high water, and accept everything that should continue, the case should continue the way it should. And you saw that uh, later on. The annoying, uh, the annoyance uh, in a judge when Mshololo is objecting mm. to, to that. It, it seems as if you, you, you cannot say anything. There's nothing that you can say when you are in a wrong. You know that part where you are regarded as a person who's wrong. So anything that comes your way, you must take it. It's a sort of correction. Let's continue. So he further said, so if Mr. Majuta comes and if the blockage and the delay is in the predicated, I don't want to say negligence. He says he doesn't want to say negligence on the administrative capacity of his department. He must say it in open court because if you read Section 342A, it also involves the public interest and the interest of justice. The state confirmed that senior officials from legal aid were going to arrive later on at around quarter past 11 in the morning. And the state informed the court that uh, Ms. Damjudo said that he will send someone senior from his office. He himself will not be available. So, yeah, they did come later on. We saw them. Um, it was a lady of no color, and uh, she explained everything that was uh, taking place with legal aid and the application that they had made. To me also, it was also feeling like they were being put on blast uh, because legal aid is like tax money, right? People are now crying and they're saying these are our taxes that are being used to defend people that are hitmen and stuff like that. You know, to, to put it out there that even 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 inquiring the costs, mm. you know, to, to make it may perhaps inspire some kind of outrage. Yes, yes. To people yes. who do not want to see their state resources defending these five accused. Mm. So it, to me, it felt that way as well. That you, I never really thought of it like this, but uh, this is this is instigating a certain emotion, which then would fast forward the case eventually. So we are going back to that part where we are saying maybe there's no need for this, because now, if you look at it also on the other side, is that this legal aid has been able to refuse and refer certain people. Now it is put on spot where now it's supposed now to abide. In fact, it is even promising. It, is find, it finds itself in a situation where in a national television it is promising that it will actually take this up. Mm. It will make sure that it works on this. So it, 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 it comes with uh, yes, I want the, the society to start speaking about this in a sense that the resources are wasted. But if we look about the resources, do we look at the resources that are wasted? Resources have been wasted from the way it go. Mm. In my own opinion, it would have saved a lot of resources if we started with 375. True. So a person who took the decision of saying there's 636 and let us, uh, 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 prosecu let us prosecute this these cases in, 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 a, in a different uh, 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 dimension. This one there, this one, this side. Uh, there's, there's no such thing. The, this whole thing is wrong. They were supposed to be merged, these cases, and then they, they, they result in one thing. In fact, I would go as further saying this, as, as to saying they were not even supposed to be merged. They were supposed to be one case. Which is 375. 375, in my own opinion. This thing of merging these cases. Because case you can already see how 636 is disconnected from the scene. It's a mess. It's, it's a mess. It's very much disconnected. Now, people that are testifying are people that came on at a very, very, very late stage. It was not ready. The status that has been given to 375, it was supposed to be given to 636. Which amazes one when 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 you look at it, because three seven 
375, I think, was it 36 that reached Maloise, uh, the NPA's hand? Both first. of them. First. I don't know which one reached them first, but what I know is that... And they were supposed to make a decision, and then you sat down, you read both these documents, and then you said 636. With what evidence? Because you, most evidence that is even trying to contradict what the, the, the accused are saying is, is, is very late. Mm. It is dated 2023... To, with what evidence did you take that decision? Mm. What evidence? So the state called a new witness, Warren Officer Lawrence Tabondlovu. He was going to testify using his affidavit in terms of Section one, 2131 and 2. He's a Warren Officer in the DPCI, the Hawks. He read an affidavit that he deposed on the 20th of October 2021. He said that is, is his signature on the document. And then he joined the police in 2006. Then he was attached to organized crime until 2014. Jovo worked at DFI, the Digital Forensic Investigation. And he has been working there since 2014. Mm. He read his affidavit and he said that his duties included the following attendance of crime scenes, search and seizure of mobile devices, and extraction of data from mobile devices, analysis of Is this data. a guy, I'm sorry, is this a guy that comes from the Hawks? Yes. Mm. And extraction of data from magnetic card data and mobile phones, compilation, compilation of statements and reports. So I remember we asked yesterday about this other cell phone expert from the Hawks. Mm. The cell phone of Ndanzi was sent to um, that person, as we heard yesterday in the uh, 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 testimony of... Um, it was Ndanzi or Ndulis one? It was Ndanzi's one. Oh, Ndanzi's one. So instead of uh, staying... Because I had thought that Stain was the one looking at all the cell phones. He came and he testified and he was linking everybody. I thought he was the only one working on the on the cell phones. Well, it looks like there's somebody from Hawks. It looks like there's somebody else who took over from Stain, which both of these people testified today in court. And we cannot uh, ignore the Hawks in this case. The Hawks have been... In, 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 in a sense, uh, part and parcel of this case. Why we Why? say that? Why? Through Sbia, mm. who at some point demonstrated the eagerness of coming back to this case uh, to an extent where that when he was sus suspended, he still participated as we had from the evidence. Mm. So when we hear such things, it's something something to look at and 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 maybe pose a question why are they so accessible what business do they have in this case as much as the intelligence what business does it have in this case mm. we have a lot of things that are really uh, troubling south africa but this case becomes one of them at the time that they met with Zungu, Sbia was there. And from what was being said is that he was not supposed to be there because at the time he was going through a situation. He was not. He, he was, was suspended. Not, he was suspended from work. Yes. Even Ramosi put it like that. Yes. So now the Hawks person is the one extracting data from a cell phone. In 2021, they're writing a statement. If you look at, at, at even the initial questions that were posed, what were, were Hawks doing there? Mm. You know, it was not a, a case that required Hawks at this point at in time. At that stage. At that the stage. incident yes. itself. What no. were they doing there? What, what business did they have there? Mm. And uh, he also has XRY certificates like a canal stain. 
you remember how he testified about XRY and stuff. Mm. And he said that one of the softwares that he uses, they can retrieve deleted messages. He has a Mac forensic for Apple devices. Mm. Remember Stain said that in the SAPS, they could not pull data from an iPhone. Mm. And they had to go to mm. the Apple Direct mm. directly in America to open an iPhone. And this one guy is a specialist in slash to April, then, I guess. Well, uh, I wonder why they did not ask the Hawks for assistance in retrieving data from iPhones that Stain could not have a look at. For example, you know, there was mentioning of the phone of the deceased, which was an iPhone. Mm. And everyone else who had been in that Spaza house who had an iPhone. So... Ndrovu also read the affidavit and he said that on the 8th of February 2021, he received the forensic bag with a request from Sergeant Mohani to extract data from the cell phone, mm. which was a Samsung Gold. Mm. Uh, the finder is named as Sergeant Mabena of CI, which is Criminal Intelligence, mm. and Sergeant Mohani of the Cold Case Unit. You should see the differences there. And... Uh, there, there was a submission that there's no such thing as cold case unit. Mm. It, it, it simple meant that some certain group decided from the, 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 the CI decided to just create their own branch. Now and then, people are given to their departments mm. when they are when they are being hearing that Mabena is from criminal intelligence and Mohani was from cold case unit and how Mohani speaks about Mabena, I thought that it was one team. Were, you know, they they were working one together. Yes, yes. They were working together for, for some time. And what is worrying is that they indeed it looks like they were working together. And mm. that con that can only mean that they are in one team. Mm. So the phone was allegedly Bongani Tanzi's uh, accused number two. And Jovu, you know, how he was reading you guys. It wasn't exactly up to par. It, 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 it didn't, you know, it, for me, I, 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 had, I had challenges, you know. I know that all of us are not perfect readers or we can read at a, at a, at a faster pace and what. But, but it seemed like there was a bit of a struggle, you know, in... In, in, in reading his work that he had written, it, it was quite a bizarre experience. But I see Kolapo, I just, I just wanted to put it out there that, you know, how he was reading his statement, it, it didn't feel connect, connected. Like, you know, I don't know, maybe it's me. I read too much into these people, you know. Mm. You, you, you know, you don't. You don't. Actually... Yesterday, I, I, I left it out. I would have liked these people to read these statements fully. All mm, of them. Mm. All of them. Because they, they, if you listen to them, they seem to have one signature. Mm. When I say one signature, they, they seem to, 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 to come from one part. Mm. Mm. Well, Ndlovu said that after he received the device, he put it in a safe at the lab. And Baloy asked him who has access. And Ndlovu said that it's himself only. So from the 8th of February 2021, when he received this evidence, he placed it in a safe because there's a lot of work that they do. And on the 20th, that's when he worked on it because it was the time that it was said for him to work on it. So he received the phone on the 8th of February placed it in a safe. Um, his reason is because he had a lot of work to do. Then he went back to it on the 20th of February. Mm. That was the appropriate time for him to work on it. That's what he said. And he said it had an MTN SIM card and a Vodacom SIM card. And Ndlovu said the cell phone had one SD card and the cell phone had a pattern. The owner set it up so that not just anyone can open it. Not by asking him to describe what a pattern is and what it means. I was very perplexed. I was expecting him to ask, how did you get to open it? 
without knowing the pattern or some like it that. was never open was it ever open no if they use the xr y and stuff they they got into it without without that but but what was the purpose of this question so they 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 managed to extract information or they extracted information on a sim card is it the sim card or the phone itself i think even the sd card the sd card the sd card is a memory card right yes yes so he said that when he was done with the extraction, the cell phone and everything else was sealed in a new evidence bag. The data which he found was stored on a CD, and on the 5th of September 2023, the cell phone CD was collected by Surgeon Vusmosi Mohani. Babanala, uh, hilapo <sighs> I thought the statement was written in 2021. Manja, I hear the 5th of September 2023. And I'm like, crickets start ringing in my head. They keep on getting closer and closer to 2024. Yeah. And, and he picked up the cell phone and the CD. When the trial was happening on the 5th of September 2023. Mgome Zulu had no further questions, uh, but Ramosipili for accused number two had some questions for the witness. He asked, you received this evidence on the 8th of February. Did Mohani give you a brief background of the case? And Glovu said, no. You said you couldn't extract from the cell phone due to the pattern on the phone. And Glovu said, yes. Ramasipili asked him, did he inform you where the cell phone was recovered? And Din Glovu said he didn't say. And Ramasipili asked him to explain the logical extraction of data from the SIM card. Glovu said logical, he's referring to the device itself, not the SIM card. The SIM card does not have the option of physical or logical. By this time, I'm trying to ask myself, what is he talking about? <laughs> what is a logical? What is a physical? <laughs> Then Ramosipili then said, when you performed the physical extraction, what tool did you use? And Ndlovu said that he had not done a physical on that device. Then he said he used XRY to extract from the cell phone and the SD card. No mention of the SIM card. None whatsoever. Guys. Oh, so with the XRY, Ustain pulled from the phone right and connected to the towers and connected those who called each other or the died something is not right guys i don't know i can't put my finger on it yet ne? but no using of the sim card so what 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 stain was using was call logs on the call, on the phone itself. That's it. No, but they had cell phone numbers there. Eh? Why do they have the cell phone numbers? Stain presented cell phone numbers. He did mm. present cell phone numbers. Thank you. And placed the cell phone numbers to the accused. Mm. But law nage my sebenza. There was no, he didn't use a SIM card. It seems like the SIM card was not something that he used. It's the memory card and the cell phone. I, I'm worried. When you resign, do, do, you, do you simply leave this government work or you resign on, you know how soldiers resign? You still you part. Of, you retire. I mean, you retire. Yes, yeah, not resign. You retire. Uh, why is staying all of a sudden not part of this? I mean, there's the, 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 that's why I'm actually going because Mshololo was correct, mm -hmm. in my opinion. He was correct. In what? They needed to have proper information about how everything went previously, and they were ambushed. 
all of a sudden they had to cross examine on a person where someone has come and put on record something and then someone is coming with some sort of additional data mm. plus mm. their own experience which now is a total different thing it requires time as much as this person is is here according to his affidavit but you still need to collaborate what stain said to to this because th- that is, is on record so he asked when you do a downloading you are personally not aware of the data that is contained in those devices is that correct then glovo said that yes he agreed well those are the only questions that ramsipili had for the witness and i won't lie i was a little bit underwhelmed me the, myself the, personally mm. I, I there was nothing like to do though nothing he did there was nothing though to do there okay what what would you have done i don't know poke holes man what Find holes holes you can poke <laughs> what holes a person think think about it this way i'm i'm requested i'm just i'm just here to tell to tell you that i was re- requested to pull data and put it there i didn't say anything else just put data put it there that's it i'm just here like to say yes another i did another question i would have liked to know is if it is a procedural for them as hawks to receive um devices from the SAPS what what division do we call no hawks hawks are part of the of the, of the policing in south africa i know right? that they are part of yes. the policing but is it is it normal to just take evidence and not go through for example stain and then go to to the hawks it might not be normal let's say he answers and says it doesn't happen most often then what do you get from that Okay, it doesn't, doesn't happen more. Understanding of the process in the which I, I I would assume it, if, if it does happen, it doesn't happen more often. But everything starts with police investigation, and then depending on how huge that thing is, then it moves to hawks. Okay, so other legal representatives had no further questions, and there was an adjournment for a few minutes as they were waiting for members of the legal aid board to come. The head of the legal aid board uh, in Pretoria eventually arrived, Ms. Flavio Isola. She is the head of uh, office for the Pretoria local. Um, the judge said that he could not meet with her in the chambers. He wanted to establish what the delays have been. The judge said that it is an informal inquiry and he said ballistic expert Chris Mangena was meant to be cross-examined but eight months later this hasn't happened. He asked Mnisi um, that one of the family members of his client partially paid but the amount is still uh, deficient. The judge said because they are under legal aid he had presumed that they do not have the money for the ballistic expert and he thought that they would have applied to the legal aid board you know directly and he said that it's in the interest of justice the public and even the accused that the delays are addressed legal aid confirmed that the application was made on the 5th of April 2024 that's 2 weeks ago and the judge said that's the problem because in august that's what they told him that they were going to do but did they tell him that they would be using a legal aid or not i don't think they were, they told him that right the plan initially was not to use legal aid but the judge wanted them to use legal aid which also makes me um wonder that should they have straight away applied for legal aid uh, what would have happened to the entire process because the very same legal aid refused to pay mkomezulu the very same legal aid gave be a condition that you know what we're not going to pay for this lawyer's legal fees now sbia is using a uh, private fund accused number 1 is using his own uh, private money to pay for mkomezulu because legal aid has said they're not going to pay for mkomezulu right so if they had this 
eight months to either accept or reject the application. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Wh- where would we be with the expert evidence of the other expert, ballistic expert? The money that came in, it, it actually triggered uh, that help. Because yes. it was not even going to be forthcoming, if you ask me. It was going to be just denied, and then Mangena would have just have a day of his life in that court, and that's it. That's it. We move on, and such is life. So they needed to try and be independent at the beginning. You understand? But then the judge is saying they should have immediately just done the legal aid application. We all know how that was going to turn out. It was not going to turn out in their favor, in my opinion. So Legal Aid said that they received the email and immediately responded. And in terms of policies and procedures of Legal Aid, when a judicare practitioner applies for expert evidence or, or an expert, they must get permission to do so, number one. That's the first thing. They needed permission to do so. Mm. Whereas when they call their own independent expert that they are going to pay themselves, they wh- whose permission do they need? Hmm? They just need to put it on record that they are going to call their own expert. But with legal aid, the, 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 the condition is that they must get permission. And I'm asking myself, where was that permission going to come from? Think about it. At the time that Mangena was testifying, um, the judge was not so willing, you understand, to have them call their own expert. He would have rather accepted Mangena's evidence and we move on with life. So if one of the conditions coming from legal aid is that they needed permission to do so, I'm asking myself, whose permission did they need? And they must send out to the grounds why they needed the expert. And also they needed to submit a costing of such an expert. The reason why they require costing is because in terms of their framework, different levels of approval is made. If it's for under 50,000 rands, she says she can approve it at the local office. But if it's between 50 and 350,000 rands, it must go to provincial office. And if it's above 350,000 rands, it goes to the CCMC, which is the Constitutional Management Committee. So you can see that the process is a bit longer depending on the amount that you're asking for. That's why they need a value of the cost. Mrs. Sola said that uh, the value of the cost was not received yet. So the judge gave an example that preparation is so much, um, drafting is so much, report is so much, because <coughs> that's what they needed to present to legal aid to have them fund uh, the ballistic expert. And uh, Legal Aid said that they set out in the email how they want the costing and it has been forthcoming or it has not been forthcoming. So that's what they were saying, that uh, the defense had not given them yet the cost of this expert, a quotation coming from the expert that this is how much the whole uh, testifying was going to cost. And the judge wanted to hear from Nisi, saying that he's the spokesperson for the colleagues. Um, Nisi had to clarify that I'm not a spokesperson. Uh, I am the one who has to make the application because the weapon is, is, is that is used is belonging to his client. Then advocate um, Charles Nisi said that it's true. The legal aid board has not yet been finished with the information of cost. Uh, however, um, he can't do that himself. Uh, he says that he was relying on the expect. He's been in communication with the expect, but uh, he's got no reason or, or he's got reason to believe that he could be engaged somewhere else, the expect. So the judge asked if he'd communicated with him by cell phone. Then he said that he heard uh, President Biden calls President Ramaphosa in South Africa when he is at Palapala. This is the judge. I don't know such information where he gets it from because this is what he's saying. Now he says you can't communicate with the expert 
Where is he? The judge said that that is worse. It's worse the fact that Nisi was not calling the expert. The expert wants to be paid. Okay. The expert wants their money. The expert wants the pay. So what is there to discuss if the expert is not getting paid? Every time they see to talk with him, he charges. Right? Mm. So the Nisi said that he is here in South Africa in Pretoria and it's not entirely accurate to say that he has not been communicating with their expert because that is what they have been doing. He says we don't know what is the delay <coughs> and what's delaying him because he believes the delay is now on the expert's part. Um, I, I, my, my, my opinion is he wants to get paid. Do you understand? He wants to get paid. But uh, he said that they have just confirmed yesterday that uh, they need the information as soon as possible. In fact, he requested in an email that he sent to the expert that uh, even uh, uh, di to direct that quotation to Legal Aid Board, um, they said that, that it must go through him first. So the quotation needs to go to Nisi, then he sends it to Legal Aid Board, not for the expert to directly contact legal aid board he said he's busy working on it now and the judge said that his concern is that forensic evidence is very sensitive this witness has ha waited eight months right he has waited eight months to be cross-examined when he comes back he will say that he doesn't remember and even himself the judge said that he doesn't remember that evidence so he made an order that everyone should go through the evidence of Mr Mangena again you understand so the judge asked Mnisi how many months they needed and Mnisi said that they don't need months um Mnisi said that the defense agreed that Mr De Clerk, which is the expert that uh, they they found um and Mr. McGann, I meet through joint uh, minutes, agree to certain things, then come to court and deal with those issues that they do not agree on. This is what Mr. Anonymous was questioning earlier on, and he said that you will come back to it. Yeah, I was questioning it because why do you want to polish this process out? We, we, we would have liked to see it raw. And oh. I think it has weight if it comes raw. Yeah. Where someone says something and someone is being um, uh, told otherwise, which is, this is not what is supposed to happen. Because now ironing everything out and then maybe finding one or two differences can actually amount to a fruitful, ex a fruitless exercise, which is seeking to collaborate in a sense, in my own opinion. It seems as if you 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 would rather have collaboration more than uh, 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 differences. Mm. Yeah, that that is rather concerning that they have to meet, then discuss what they do agree on and what they don't agree on, and then they come to. Isn't that gonna cause further confusion? Already, the the ballistic evidence was heavy to to go through with Mangena. So now, this whole caucus they're going to be having, and then when you guys come in, you're going to come with issues that they don't agree with. How, how about you just let Mr. De Klerk testify, say what his findings were, what his analysis, what, 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 what his report is on the evidence that he was given. And then, cross-examine or examine, and then have the state cross-examine, and then re-examine. Why must Mangena now be a part of a process that is in pursuit of discrediting his work? So Mnisi said that most of the time, forensic evidence is contained in papers and they can simply go back to the report he has and refresh his memory. The judge asked him if he has ever heard of evidence getting lost. Now evidence can get lost. Mnisi said that uh, <laughs> we must be in a terrible state if evidence gets lost winning nilly, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nizi estimated a week or two and the judge said that he will give them a month. So it will take more than two days to finalize at the national office is what the legal aid board, uh, Miss Isola said. And the defense will now cross-examine ballistic expert uh, Chris Mangena on the 20th of May. That's like nine days away from the elections. 20th of May, a month from now. So the state called another witness, Lieutenant Colonel Gideon Gideon Hose, a cell phone data analyst who downloaded the contents of Ndanzi's phone. And uh, yeah, I was asking myself at this point, Stain was the one who did the downloads on the accused phones. So does it mean that Hose re-analyzed Ndanzi's phone or stay never touched Ndanzi's phone. I'm still stuck on that. I don't understand what is happening in that. You did. Stay examined Ndanzi's phone. So what, what they are saying is there was a, a, a like rework that needed to be done. Like, okay, since this person is not here, do this for us. So this would be the latest. Like, basically, this would be something that just recently happened. Hmm. Holes is a cell phone uh, expert or a cell phone analyst, not expert. No, he did not say that. He's an analyst, cell phone analyst. He took over from Colonel Lamberta Stein after his retirement and Brigadier Bongani Gininda asked him to analyze some phones. Hose read his affidavit and he said that he will also use a presentation on screen to demonstrate his affidavit. He said that he was attached to Priority Crimes Unit. He has 32 years work experience in the service, 18 of which are in analysis. He has completed several forensic courses and a detective courses. Hose said that his tasks consist of downloading data on cell phones. He read further that on the 4th of September 2023, he received a call from Brigadier Kininda, who was working with Colonel Stain, who is now retired, to assist Colonel Stain to do some analysis. And on the 6th, he then received a CD that was in a sealed bag. So estimation here is that this whole thing was... Uh, happening sometime around last year. And Tanzi's phone was re-analyzed or looked at something further sometime last year. And I would estimate it was around the time that Colonel Stain was testifying, in in my opinion, the yeah. timeline. So, yeah. And the judge said that, as you know, Mr. Host differs from the contents of file. He explains that Stain has retired and that Gininda went to consult him to take over the process, asking Baloy if he's going to apply for an amendment because this is an affidavit. It, uh, if it goes to any other place, there will be some smart Oleg who goes to the Constitutional Court and say that this affidavit talks about Stain, and he's no longer there. He has retired and blah, blah, blah. So literally here, a judge was trying to cover what will happen in the Constitutional Court should it go to the Constitutional Court. And he was literally helping the state cover themselves on this part. So Balwe said that the state would request that the amendments be affected as the witness has testified and that there will be other places where there will be amendments as well. And they requested that this evidence be regarded as having amended uh, the affidavit. Ramasipeli said that the affidavit should be read as is and he should uh, lead on the amendments by Balwe. The defense raised an issue over these amendments in the affidavit. Mnisi said that you cannot amend an affidavit. You need a supplementary affidavit. The judge said that he knew that. He knew that, but he was kind of pressed for somebody who knows that, in my opinion. 
And that's why he said that some of the smart Oleg will go to the Constitutional Court and say that Stain is dead. He asked Mnisi if he wanted them to adjourn. And by the way, Stain is not dead. He's just retired. Okay, he should retire. And Dimshololo then said that their clients are suffering prejudice. Habana Mangazwa is reality prejudice. Except, you know, expect Wuti, the judge is going to throw a tantrum. That's what I've noticed. He doesn't like this word prejudice. Whenever it comes out of the defense's mouth, you are going to have a tough time. He's going to be upset. This word prejudice upsets him i don't know why but it upsets him he doesn't like it especially when it comes from the defense it can come from the state it cannot come from the defense <laughs> so he says their clients are suffering prejudice as the amendments are made on the witness box and Mshalala said we have not been furnished with the supplementary affidavit and we do not know the information that will be supplemented we are being surprised as the witness wishes to explain and amend the paragraph as he likes. We are not aware of what is going to be supplemented. Yeah. And the judge asked if anything else would be supplemented except for the part where it says that Stain is the one who did the analysis. And if Stain did the analysis, why was it done again with holes? In That's my question. You they know. would say because they said it's absent. Baloy said that there are no main amendments to the affidavit and he said that there will be one more minor amendment but it doesn't go to uh, the... Well, Baloy said that he is surprised that Advocate Mshololo said that they are prejudiced. You know, they accused are prejudiced. How can one uh, name being replaced by another name cause prejudice? Here's the thing with the state and Advocate Baloy. Advocate Baloy will say it's just minor adjustments. The next thing you know, the whole document is being changed as the witnesses testify. I've seen this movie before. <laughs> And the next thing you know, people are correcting themselves as they are testifying. I think you guys, it's like it's like we've seen this before. So mm. him to just say it's just the minor. There's nothing minor when it comes to the state. There's nothing minor when it comes to Advocate Baloy. Honestly speaking, in my experience of watching him and watching how the state moves, I've, I've, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on these minor. Uh, changes. Next thing you know, the whole thing is being paraphrased right in front of you. And what goes into the record is not what is written on that statement. So the judge laughed and said that it's a prejudice. You see, this word prejudice, whenever it comes from the defense, it always uh, irks him. And uh, what baffles me is why didn't Baloy do all of these amendments properly? I mean, he knows the process, right? He understands what is supposed to happen. He's been doing this for years. Why didn't he just make a supplementary affidavit? Because he knows the rules. I mean, wh why? D did he need more time to make other adjustments in between before this witness come in to testify? Why did he park it? Is a question I have. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the judge read the part where it said holes, uh, says that under oath, and asked the contents of this evidence of this affidavit, they come from you as an expert, and they're not done by her stain. And how said the yes, the judge said, let me get into, uh, let me get into, it or get it from the horse's mouth. Let me get it from the horse's mouth, meaning a uh, hose. It's not like the affidavit says, I, Gert Stein, under oath, say blah, 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 blah. Because he was arguing on the basis that uh, House is disclosing that he was given this work and it's coming from Stein and Stein is retired, right? I, the affidavit in itself does not say that I, Stein, did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It says, I, a uh, host, Gideon host, Gideon host, did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Mgome Zulu said that his submission, um, independently so, is that uh, 
that is an affidavit. Any discrepancies that are placed on record on the contents of the affidavit can be challenged on the witness, irrespective of the procedure, to file a supplementary affidavit. This is just a mere amendment. The issue that Mshololo has raised is whether it is prejudicial to the accused persons. Anything that is material or that is prejudicial is a reason to object. But in the circumstances, if I find hearsay evidence, let's say, for instance, I am cross-examining this witness and it comes to my attention that paragraph 5 is hearsay, then I have to put it to the witness that this paragraph constitutes to hearsay and the court cannot accept this evidence. That is how it should be done. The judge said yes in agreement with Mgomezulu, and the judge said that he does not have a problem, and he asked that they adjourn and come back tomorrow. All of a sudden, he was proposing an adjournment, and it was quite weird how he was saying that Ramasipil is the one who asked for the adjournment. I honestly did not understand what was happening with the judge in those final moments just before the adjournment. I, I was like, well, you, you, Ramasipil, for one, never asked for an adjournment. In fact, he said we should continue and the amendments will be made. And here Mgomezul is saying that if there's anything or any issues that arise or hearsay evidence, making an example, they will object, right? They will stand to object and have it being put properly. So nobody was asking for an adjournment from what I heard and observed. But the judge wanted the adjournment uh, because he wanted it to be done properly. In my opinion, I feel like, yeah, he wanted the state to go and correct, you understand, uh, before they do something that is not supposed to be done. And, yeah, and I also felt like he was throwing shade at Mshololo at some point, especially with this prejudice thing. Well, he told Baloy to draw a supplementary affidavit and he said, otherwise we're going to waste time here because according to me, this is the deponent's not stain. And if you read this with understanding, Khao said that uh, um, the facts contained there are to his best of his knowledge. The judge was reading the affidavit and it said, Hose, I, Hose, I, Hose. Then Hose said that he was contacted by Stain. And the judge asked that if Mr. Hose was available tomorrow, otherwise, this is just a waste of time. Hose said that he was contacted by Brigadier Gininda to take over the case because Stain was going to retire. And Baloy said that according to Section 213, in addition to the affidavit, the witness may give viva voce evidence. That's like word of mouth evidence, right? And uh, viva voce evidence carries weight. And he explained these errors. He said that he does not see the reason. And the judge said that they are saying this would be prejudice since he talked to Stain. <laughs> he was really sure. Throwing, throwing the whole tree at Mshololo's direction. <laughs> Ramasipili had clarified that he did not say that they should adjourn, but the judge adjourned either way. And the judge further said that it was a waste of time. So the adjournment was for Baloy to go make those supplementary affidavit. And he told Hose that there are uh, any other changes that he wants to amend, he can do so. So, yeah, we'll... We'll see tomorrow what happens. I'm done, you guys. For those of you who've been burning to call in, I think now would be the appropriate time to do so. And thank you so much for your patience. I covered everything. Yeah, guys, uh, just uh, as we wait for calls, uh, if there are any calls, if we don't, then good for it's me. Um, moodly, I'll just mention people while I'm, I wait for calls. Paul Manjani. So let me see if we share. Let me see. Emily, hope all is well your side. Yeah, I only have two things to deal with today the first one is going to be the the 
expert witness that is going to be called by the defense. I feel as if the defense might have taken the wrong turn in asking for a ballistic expert because when this guy comes, this guy is only going to work with what? With the material that has been presented to him by the state. So, which is when, what, what materials are those going to be? It's going to be the bullet and the gun, right? And these things are obviously going to match. So I feel as if the defense here were not supposed to ask for a ballistic expert. They were supposed to ask for an expert that is going to work independently without the help of state material. For example, like the one that, the, for, for example, an expert that is going to come in and deal with the data of the cellular phones or the, what was the thing, AVL, the tracker. They were good points. Hello, because you had to stop them. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you, Mr. Anonymous? We're good, and you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, met a friend from Australia. I'm just trying to make head head yeah. sense in this whole sense of case. Yeah. To be honest, I think uh, this is just a waste of time. I think this should this is a political gimmick, allegedly, according to me, because the judgment has been pre-done, but uh, they're just trying to get some icing on the cake to put on the judgment. Otherwise, that's why I find that the judge is always pushy on the defense and... Uh, he makes sure that uh, he glorifies this debt and if you really look at the whole case is um, whatever the state brings in, the judge ha- hardly opposes. He's, act- he's actually part of it. Mm. Mm. So you find there uh, it's another waste of state money and uh, Chances are the legal board will not approve the money for the specialist ballistics, to be honest, because if the specialist ballistics will spoil the um, the icing on the cake, then it won't be good for the state. Mm. So that's my opinion, allegedly. Mm. All right. Mm. No, thank you. Yes. Thank you. thank you for sharing your opinion. It's It's interesting. We'll see what happens on the 20th of May, but I will remember this. I will hold on to it. <laughs> I will hold on to it. And you know what? Some of you guys think they're not going to approve that. Because I'm also thinking, like, in that eight-month period he's complaining about, that was a lot of time for uh, legal aid to say no. Yes. Uh, what... Uh, what uh I think the, 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 the one that was in the in the trial within the trial, yes. something like that, in, an independent person that is going to work independently without the material of the state. Mm. And secondly, uh, what happened today with Rata, I feel as if Rata was tired. He wanted for an adjournment because ever since the day started, he was pushing for an adjournment. For what reason, I really do not know. But I feel as if Rata today didn't wake up on the right side of the bed. And he had the audacity to push the blame onto the onto the defense and saying it is they are wasting time. But in the meantime, he is the one that has been pushing for the adjournment since the morning time, since he stepped into that courtroom. Yeah, that's my two cents for the day. Have a blessed night for you guys. Some of us are still at work at night shift. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, hey night, night shift. shift. So we're keeping you a company. Mm. Uh, guys, please like the video. I see we we, 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 are, we do not have appetite to like the Please like the video, guys. Uh, we know the drill. Uh, for those who've been here for long, please like the video and uh, share it where you can share it and subscribe. If you know, subscribe, you want to become part of these comments please subscribe yeah. um. 
a very good morning to you emily good morning mm. very good morning indeed zanzi hello hello mzanzi reality hi how are you ah usia pila njan goto usia pila yeah yeah no i've just i have a question because i'm i'm i'm, I'm trying to um nkaba yenkosi okhulumayo okay eh ngizobingilela nako sisemeli yeah so i'm i'm trying to look at how illegal aid works yeah i i don't understand it do you okay ngitholile ukuthi if you earn less than unless they updated it amended it if you earn less than 5500 then you can apply for illegal aid mm. so do you get your lawyer aside and introduce them to illegal aid or you apply to them and then they give you the lawyer that's the question i wanted to to ask mostly these lawyers they they are there around the courts depending on how your case is if you are organized you would probably have okay. to apply like they did with this accuser you, okay. you can do that but they have to to be in good books in terms of uh, okay. there are a lot of things that they need to pass basically okay okay and then that means for the legal aid to approve that they are going this lawyer can represent me they need to know the kind of case details about the case don't they they they, they it's not about the case per se what they are saying is what they want to put weight in it uh, it's, it's some sort of w- w- why would you want an expect mm. while there is an expect already there mm. you know you have to okay. put a supporting uh, document mm. as to you maybe you don't trust i don't know maybe you feel that there might be a foul yeah. play or something like that yeah yeah but, but i think an efficient way for the legal aid to make because uh, what i'm looking at i'll be very very short what i'm looking at is two challenges one um the the the, the judge the delay when i'm looking at their bureaucratic, uh, bureaucratic red tape of that you, uh, if it's this much they send it to this much and to this one and this one but what I, what i'm thinking is why can they they through the lawyer when, when the lawyer takes the case because they know it's a high profile case and they, they say hey okay check how many how many experts are there already and then would you like some some, some experts in casing a qali you can urge why you would need experts on that and by the time the case starts they are funding the expert mm already instead of this red tape that okay no if you, the, the expect needs this much what 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 uh, the process before it starts because you know they've got this expect already for palestine where i uh, expect the yeah, yeah, what's this yeah, yeah, my phone. they've got these people already so you can find your own already before the expect are called and then the, the bureaucratic tape is being learned you, you maneuver it before even the case starts yeah no, i, I think you. that would be if they want to help the poor people because it, 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 it's it's just so strange that you find that uh, poor people because my my uh, my understanding my, my my thinking is maybe messi and these other lawyers they didn't agree on the expect things but at times maybe messi wasn't like being vocal but was saying no I'm, i don't think i need this person you know and then the others they really needed the the the, the, the expect and now that uh, it's pushed to him that they, they they say you should apply it then it doesn't want to be a black lane a black sheep but no actually i don't think we do need to um, expect the way the case yambanga ko now they are in this mess because of that mm. no we hear Hi, that's my opinion that's my opinion thanks yes. thanks thanks thank you you're doing a good job guys thank you very much and the and the lovely lady there thank you thank you that is in a perfect world that's all i can say the suggestion is good um it is doable but in a perfect world where government really is eager. Zanzi hello. Zanzi hello. 
Hello. Hi, sir. Can you the volume? And then, Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, can you reduce oh. the volume? Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Are you good? I am Sanborn and Nijan Zani. CRP and Zani. I said, Yeah. I, yes, it's not a blame. Wong is a color more at home, play more at. Man, we are born and now we are to go to the middle. And she said, The moon to Upalise Kala Yena. Lenda Ipalise, Navanda Wam Kopi, Utave Lapo, Wam Kopi Baz. Oh, in a final love, my city, my way is full of it is so good. Going forward, sing a fish in the morning, Sibon is into the ways in our corner. Like, see, we were born up when he case about to Abanga Sadi, no, we don't have your own. He needs the Maga. He so in the Mugula, Unkulungul Bafui, Avan Bafung, Avan Bad Tandas every day, to see Kuntans with Nalanga Tandas and Sunday. He knows this. But Kiketan won a woody. Sizukulum or Satan, sometimes Satan is overling and I'm pondering and willing at his improp. Nyabo, bye bye. Sabo. Yes, or Adam Kulum, Pondil. Uh, hey, let me let me let me correct a bit here. Uh, Moodley, uh, Mr. Anonymous' first docket on the table was thirty-seven five. Soon after six, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm being corrected. That's true. That's what it is. That's what I was saying. That I think thirty-seven five came first, and then uh, Kininda came. That's what Mangena said. Mm. And then Kininda. I think you won with this case. Yeah. It got uh, to be taken to trial in 636 instead of 375. Mm. Mr. Anonymous, greetings also to the morning gang of Muzanza Reality. Oh, to the morning gang. No, thank you guys for more deliberation on this matter. I, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. I mean, yeah, this case is so frustrating, guys. You know, like, it's so frustrating. It's so straining. But here we are. Here we are. Uh, let me first uh, comment on Ratha's impatience when it comes to the defense. I agree with Mr. Anonymous when he say he's in a hurry to make judgment over gathering facts for this case. He's not here to listen to the defense and he's not hiding it. I like the guy so impatient when it comes to the defense and he's always witch hunting. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> Balo, you wanted to act smart today, uh, trying to be persuasive towards the judge about taking the matter to chambers. But when he was instructed to to read the section, you know, like, <laughs> I was expecting Balo to at least pretend to be looking where the section, where he can find it, but it was right, right in front of him. I mean, that tells you that the judge is preparing this case with, with Baloy. Hence, some days he he acts like prosecutor in this matter. You know, like Baloy could have acted like at least paging, yeah, looking for that section. But in this case, ne, it was right in front of you. Then the question would be, uh, how did he know? This tells us, guys, that this these people are in are preparing this case together, man. They are preparing everything together, and you know, like they they 
the reason they took the matter to court it was to humiliate the defense instead of going to chambers it was aimed at uh, humiliating the defense unfortunately Mnisi at least gave like some sound reasons and it didn't land as expected you can tell he was disappointed because i mean it was supposed to be headlines because they they are in cahoots with journalists as well you can tell by the reporting every time especially when the defense is found wanting eyes in for for dovia nach was just hired to read the script guys i mean a very well written script you can tell the guy didn't know anything he was speaking about well written well well written script but when in cross uh, examination when he's asked questions he responds in in zulu then it <laughs> then it tells you the guy the guy shame he was just there for the script and nothing much like he didn't understand anything he was talking about but <laughs> let's pray for strength guys we need it yeah. no thank you guys let me give others a chance yeah, thank, thank you. you very much yeah, a sense of humor there you pointing it out now that i think allegedly about it. first yeah, allegedly allegedly everything said is alleged and the views cuz there are said, some yeah, explanations i don't understand what he was talking about Love was when he was explaining the x r y and the, it, 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 it became wishy washy to me again it became wishy washy i feel like stain gave better explanations about the XRY and all of these systems that they were using. Is an intern. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand what he was saying. I'm sure you guys could tell. I even put it in there that I, crickets. Like, I don't, I don't understand what he was talking about. <laughs> and it became tricky when Ramasipil was cross-examining him at the beginning. Got Jane. We have been at Sungabrusumbluk. Right, guys, I think I have on my side covered everything uh, as also an administrator here. Um, just, Ned, thank you be, for being with us. Mtozi Silanga, thank you. Modli, thank you. Oh, Caesar, we are not talking about which case was created first. The case that was created first is 636. The docket yes. that was created first yes. is 636. We know that. And then 375. But the arrival in that NPA office, in what they call the term Baloy's office, it was uh, Mangena, if I'm not mistaken, that's what Mangena said. And then it was Kinindalit. That's what we are talking about, that order. Uh, and yeah, Sizum Gaga, we were on the comments. Tapsile, uh, comments. Paul Manjani, uh, on the comment. Ansi K. Moyo, our moderator. And uh, thank you. Um, and also, Ned is our moderator. Thank you. Thank you, uh, guys. And Muli is obviously our uh, member. Thank you. Sibanda Skatele. Uh, and then Momi, Mo, and we have, uh, I think Tapsi, the short I've called you, Lady C, and we have Bongani, Tanti, and we also had Simpiwe, Koboka, uh, um, I would read the same name, Lukaka, Lukaku, or oh, Lukaku, I almost said Kaka, a hey, football. It will it will leave you in 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 in, in, in <laughs> painful heart. Uh, today I was watching Barcelona. Just <sighs> Lukaku, eh, like Ramiro Lukaku. Uh, Chuku Ana was here, and then we had yeah. They, I think that's it, guys. That's it. If I didn't mention you, Polani Junior uh, was also here. Uh, it's not my intention to jump your names. 
it's either your name is difficult for me or WS was also here. Uh, hey, okay. <laughs> Katejo was here. Mbaka Chene was here. Um, Talk More Media was here. Uh, Michelle Lee was here. And uh, we, 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 we had, uh, yeah, Tidi, Anna, Mohabi, our member, was also here. Uh, Mina, Sangwin, was here. Uh, yeah, Mina, I read it correct. I thought I uh, butchered. Uh, yeah, guys, thank you for being here. Sanjiwe. Uh, was also here. Hmm. Thank you, guys. Thank you. If I didn't mention you, uh, I it's not uh, on purpose. Chikelo, I'm hoping I'm reading this right. Hey, Raul, right? Is that how you call it? Raul, the name. Mzansi, hello. Uh, Zanzi, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, yeah, I, I just want to to make a few observations. Please do. Uh, the I was looking at the period Stain was testifying. He actually started on the 28th of July, mm-hmm. 2023. And then um, Shorolo finished cross-examining him. I think 28th July was a Friday. Mm. So Shorolo finished cross-examining him on on the first of first of August. Mm. Yeah. Was first of August. So, which means the state waited uh, for staying to finish and, and assess. If, if there were any holes poked by the defense. And then to close those holes, they, they, they picked this guy who is going to, this Gideon, who is going to, to testify tomorrow. So it's clear that the state is actually, that, that's why there are many witnesses, because if one witness fails, if one state witness fails, then, then the holes are poked. Well, we'll go and look for another. Well, well, in Kininda, we'll go and look for another witness to try and close those those walls that have been caught. Mm-hmm. So that's why we are having so many so many witnesses on the state side. Mm-hmm. And now that the, the legal aid is paying for for eight states, I think the defense should also send down this the cross examination of. Of, of Mr. Kitian mm. and, and apply for their own cell phone expert mm. so that the, the expert will then deal with the, the evidence that will be that will be led by 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 Kitian because you you can actually see that the, the lawyers are and, and rightfully so they are they are playing on the on this type of, of expert evidence. They are, they are not cell phone experts anyway, so one would expect them to to get help from, from a cell phone expert. Mm. Mm. So they should they should actually up extend down this this cross examination, the cross examination of Kitchen, and then look for their own expert and apply yeah. to the legal aid to, to find to find that expert. Mm. And I, with the way things are going, uh, the, these guys will go down. Yeah, I, I feel because it. yeah, the, the more I, I think the, this expert is actually coming to maybe to nail in dance. Mm. So once as is nailed, it will be easy for for the others to to follow. Mm-hmm. Because this cell phone they tend to. I think they are trying to show us that there was communication between number five and 
now there's a message or something that's what i also i i also thought that hey, here next thing we'll be seeing messages full messages like a lot of messages yeah. and it doesn't have to be i i hear some people talking about that in terms of what is for in 2018 19 mm. it doesn't matter that because the communication should have been the communication that they say happened should have been in 2020 and it's possible that they might have taken those phones and did whatever whatever they because if there is no expert how, how will if there is no defense expert mm. how will the, the the defense know what what these guys what the state expert was doing because they would not make a report they would not have the cell phone they would not have the the, the downloads they would not they would not have the source of where the, the 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 downloads were done because if there is a, a defense expert then that defense expert will, must have access to to the for mm. which is the source of the downloads yes and then we from there so if they just rely on if they just want to cross examine this guy without their own expert to be difficult for them because there is nothing that they are going to to report Thank so you. that's my that's my submission. Thank Your you. submission has been yeah, brilliant. Thanks. I haven't even thought of it like that. Yo, guys. Ziakal. Just like the video. Ziakal. It's like they've put it at least on 200 something. It's like the video and uh, it's a buy from me. Thank you guys. Thank you. I think I'm going to rewatch this again. Thank you guys. Bye.